Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Sleeping Dogs. Always an exciting day for me and, you know, for the channel at large when I get a chance to take a look at some pre-release AAA content. Square Enix was nice enough to send me an early copy of Sleeping Dogs for the Xbox 360. I am indeed playing the 360 version right now, not the PC version. Uh, so I figured it'd be nice for me to, you know, step in here and show you, uh, is this game... Good? Is it worth buying or is it a piece of garbage? I'm gonna spoil things for you a little bit. Uh, this game is not a piece of garbage. I actually think it is pretty damn good. For those of you who don't know the saga of Sleeping Dogs, basically this was, it was supposed to be like True Crime Hong Kong from the Activision's True Crime series, but Activision was like, eh, I don't think we're ever gonna get to Grand Theft Auto's level of sales or profit, so they kind of shopped the game around. Square Enix ended up picking it up. It's uh, developed by United Front Games, and... Here we are, sitting now in August 2000, 2012, and Sleeping Dogs should be coming out exactly the same day as uh, this video comes out. So I've got about five hours into this game so far, but unfortunately I deleted my later save, so we're not going to see too much of like the late game content, uh, because I don't understand how autosave slots work. So we're going to show off some of the early stuff in the game here, which is A-OK, -okay, because we will not show off any spoiler content then, so that is totally cool. So we're going to load into one of my earlier saves here, we're probably going to go for Going Under, I guess. Uh, and yeah, so I should kind of describe what Sleeping Dogs is about because I think sometimes the marketing in this game has been a little bit confusing for a lot of people. Uh, people that I've talked to about Sleeping Dogs have been like, I don't really know what the game's about. So uh, basically this is just your standard open world crime sandbox game. So you can think of it like a Grand Theft Auto, you can think of it like a Saints Row, you can think of it like a Crackdown. I mean all of those games are obviously divergent. If Grand Theft Auto is like your gritty, I don't know, kind of departed style game and Saints Row 3 is your absurd style game, Sleeping Dogs occupies a space sort of in the middle here, so I'm not gonna... I guess I'll let these guys talk for a little bit, just to show you guys kind of like the acting, the voice acting and the actual like lip syncing and graphics of what's going on here. But to set the stage, basically, this is a meeting of two rival lieutenants in the Chinese triad who are having a civil war, basically. to see you. How's your family, huh? What do you want, dog eyes? Oh, Winston, wait, wait, wait. Brother, I just came to talk to you, man. For old time's sake. Want something out here, okay? We can share the night market, huh? We're both Song Ong Yi, both grown men. We shouldn't be fighting like children. <laughs> hey, who's the new blood? This way. You remember Mimi Sh All right, so I'm just gonna skip over this because they're about to get in some slight spoilery dialogue, and I really want to avoid spoiler content so that the uh, you know the story of the game, if you choose to purchase it, can actually play out. So basically, we are playing as Wei Shen here. He is. An undercover cop who has a vendetta with the triad. He's working in Hong Kong, but he also wor previously worked in the U.S. So what he's been tasked to do by the police force here in Hong Kong is kind of get in tight with the triad by doing favors for them. And eventually, the cops are going to try to take out the triad from the inside out. So we're walking through the night market right now, which you might have heard the rival lieutenant Dog Eyes mention. And we're walking with our childhood friend Jackie here, who is also an important character. One thing you might notice is we had an opportunity to buy something there. I might talk about this a little bit later, but basically there are these food stands here that sell buffs that we can can buy that can help our, you know, give us health regeneration for X amount of time or give us extra damage for X amount of time. But this is actually a really good mission to kind of showcase some of the variety of gameplay in terms of Sleeping Dogs. This is, you can think of it almost, again, I'm going to mention Grand Theft Auto and Saints Row a lot, but you can think of it almost as one of those games, but instead of focusing on gunplay, it focuses way, way more on hand-to-hand -hand combat, and that is definitely a strength for this game. So we're going to try to extort money from this guy. Hey, little brother. We work for Winston. I understand. How can I help? Winston runs this place, and if you don't want trouble, you pay him. Period. Of course. No problem. All right, so right now we're extorting protection money from the people in the market because basically Dog Guys and Winston are fighting over this area. Obviously, you can imagine this is probably a pretty big money maker. And that's basically like the first, again, I'm about five hours into the game. The first act of the game, it seems to be, is focused mainly on this kind of local civil war that's going on. And the reason this is a good mission is because things escalate very quickly as we get started here. So let's talk to the watch vendor. We're collecting for Winston. Winston? Dog guy said he's in charge here. We're here to clarify that. What, you want to be the guy we use to clear up the confusion? I'm not afraid you guys. Alright, so one kind of combat mechanic that we have in Sleeping Dogs here is we can grapple them by using B, if I can actually get close to this guy. Alright, so and then we can find like red environments, or red areas in the environment, and if we actually push them into that with B, we can do some environmental kills. So we basically ruin that guy's life as well as ruining a perfectly good phone boost, but that gets us some excellent points. So we're going to extort the money from this guy and smash that cardboard box in front of his stall. 
Yo, take your time, man. Glad I can make you see reason. Take the money. But dog, I won't be happy. All right, so that is one thing that you can do. There's a lot of uh, grappling going along. Uh, so basically, the way that fighting works, you're going to see it when we get to this next vendor very soon here. Uh, but the way that fighting works is it's like a mixture of grappling, and usually when you're grappling, you're going to try to throw them into some kind of environmental stuff. By the way, there is like a, a free-running element to this game as well. So if I go back and, and take a running jump at this thing, there's a lot of foot chases. If I hit A, yeah, you can see I just vault over that. So there's a lot of foot chases that happen in the game. Let's talk to this gentleman right here. Winston, we need to discuss business. Winston? I don't have any business with Winston. Everyone has business with Winston. You're going to pay up, you understand? Go tell Winston to stick a back toy up his ass. All right, well, I'm not going to spoil things for that guy, but I'm pretty sure that Winston is not actually going to stick a bok choy up his ass. So now we get into the meat of what I think makes Sleeping Dogs such a worthwhile title. This is the hand-to-hand -hand combat. And, you know, normally in like a Grand Theft Auto or a Saints Row type game, when you get into hand-to-hand -hand combat, it's basically just, it looks like your guy is just totally uncontrolled, just wailing his fists in all directions. Whereas in this, it definitely looks more, um, let's say, finesse and uh, maybe more nuanced or fluid is maybe the word that I'm going to go for here. Actually, the combat feels less like your standard open world sandbox game and more like a, like an Assassin's Creed or even like an Arkham Asylum or Arkham City or something like that. So basically, our controls here, I'm just using left trigger to like put myself in a fighting stance and focus on these guys. And then when they turn red, that means they're going to attack soon. So I can counter that by hitting Y. Uh, there's a reasonably good window for when you can hit Y in order to counter, which works well. And then, you know, it'll do an automatic punishing move on them. We'll just go help out Jackie with this last guy here. So we can push him into this recycling box for another environmental kill. I think this is probably full of broken glass, yeah. All of those recycling boxes are apparently full of broken glass, but that should be enough to intimidate this guy into giving us some actual money. So did you have a message for Winston? He's obviously better than Tall Guys. Please give him this payment from me. All right, so we have one more vendor to go to. But yeah, the combat is just... Oh, can we vault? Yes, we can. Uh, we're not going to see any parkour, I think, in this video because the, the missions on the in the early game, only one of them really involves foot chases, but foot chases do happen now and then. Uh, it's kind of it adds some nice little variety as opposed to every chase in the game being a car chase, which is what happens in a lot of, of games like this. So we're going to protect the butcher here. I'll get a chance to talk more about the combat. So, at, like, at the surface, the combat is, is pretty simplistic. It's basically, the way I fight, anyway, is just using Y to counter whenever counter whenever I get the chance. And just trying to not hit too many strikes, those are with the X button, so that I have a chance to counter again. You can see it looks very fluid, and the animations, occasionally, like, they'll get a little janky, but it's very, very rare. Most of the time, it looks like a fairly natural fight, even though it doesn't really make sense why these guys aren't just all coming at me at once. Uh, but in any case, you know, the way we're doing these combos here is basically just by using the X button... Uh, light tap of the X button will give us a standard strike, and a hard tap, or a hard press, and a hold uh, will give us a harder strike. So I think we'll help out Jackie again. Apparently not the greatest fighter of all time. Oh, but he got him finished off there. By the way, we could pick up this purse and actually use this purse as a weapon, but I don't know if that would have been in our best interest. So we're going to talk to our butcher here, who is apparently pretty excited about this. He was demanding 20 times the normal payment. Maybe he has a drug habit or something. For a small fee, Winston will make sure you don't have trouble with gangsters. That sounds very reasonable. Alright, so as I mentioned, we're very much in the uh, early part of the game here. So what we want to do next, if we so chose, we can go to the clothing stall. This is basically just introducing us to this idea that, uh, you know, you can change your wardrobe. It has a lot of those standard open world trappings, like you can upgrade and buy new cars, you can upgrade and buy new items for your wardrobe, and, you know, there's various kind of random stuff to do throughout the city that we'll show off a little bit later. It's unfortunate that we're not going to be able to show off kind of a later save, because there's some crazy shit that you can do, just kind of like for... I guess, random tooling around in the city. Like, there's a karaoke minigame built into this that kind of works like Rock Band, except you don't use your microphone. You just use, like, your, uh, I was going to say mouse. It probably will be the mouse on the PC, but you can just use your uh, analog stick to, like, match Way's pitch to the actual pitch of the song. And there's licensed music. By the way, what I'm trying to show off here is that uh, there's certain equipments that requires face. Face is just something that you gain when you do favors for people in the community. And also, if you look on the left there, wearing certain accessories can give you buffs as well. So there is kind of like an RPG element to this, you could almost say, where, you know, certain equipped clothing items will actually give you uh, a benefit to your actual combat. But I don't really care about purchasing a baseball cap or new shoes or anything like that, so we're probably just going to get out of here and go with our existing outfit. This guy looks pretty dapper. He looks like he browses male fashion advice. Uh, but that's basically it for that mission. We could finish it, but there's no point, really. We're basically done. Uh, what we're going to do instead is load into another mission here. Not pay hosp hospital bills. Let's go with uh, Night Market Chase, I think. 
we can get down to that. So Night Market Chase, uh, this is going to actually take place right after a mission where I was actually required to do some parkouring stuff. So it's not necessarily the best timing for uh, me to be showing this off. But I mean, this is the early part of the game, so they do a very good job over the first hour or two hours of demonstrating like all the different kinds of missions you're going to deal with in Sleeping Dogs. So there's missions that focus heavily on hand-to-hand -hand combat, there's missions that focus heavily on... Well, it, pretty much every mission has an element of combat in it to a certain extent. There's missions that focus on hacking. There is sort of hacking in this game. In my first five hours, I haven't seen all that much. There's missions that focus on gunplay, and I haven't seen too many of those either, which is good, because the gunplay just seems, you know, standard. Nothing truly remarkable there. Uh, the, the game definitely shines when it's focusing on hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then there's missions that focus on a variety of all that stuff, all, you know, mixed together to make one kind of overarching, longer, more satisfying mission. There's missions involving car chases as well, and we're going to see some driving soon. So this is our apartment, you know, standard uh, apartment for an open world game. It's our base of operations. We can change our wardrobe, and there's a little bit of other stuff we can do in here. So we are just going to exit here and enter into the open city of Hong Kong. So one thing I do like is we have these parking garages, but I'll explain those in maybe a minute. What I want to show off right now is that just by clicking in the left analog stick, I can actually choose to set my waypoint at any of our next available missions. So if I open up my map here... Uh, you can see, I might want to zoom out a little bit, but you can see that there are, like, two shields down there at the bottom. By the way, I've played, like I said, about five hours so far. I've spent almost all of my time in North Point. I've spent a little bit of time up here in Central, but by and large, uh, four, four and a half hours up in North Point exclusively. So it does seem to have that open world progression where you, like, slowly move into more and more areas on the map. But I, um, yeah, it doesn't feel like this is going to be a game that's going to be over in 10, 12 hours or something like that. It feels like it's going to be a little bit longer. And that was pretty much, like, straight mission, 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 mission. I didn't do too much, like, random stuff in the city. So yeah, because we were working, like I mentioned, as an undercover cop, we have two different kinds of missions we can do. We can do blue shields, which are police stuff, or we can do green shields, which are the triad stuff. So blue shields tend to be things like... Uh, I gotta make sure I click on the triad one there. Uh, blue shields are things like, you know, we gotta cut off this drug supplier. Uh, maybe you have to help police make an arrest or identify a criminal. Uh, whereas green ones, the triad missions, I tend to enjoy a little bit more. Usually those are things like robberies, stick-ups, uh, intimidations. Maybe you have to do some kind of, like, car chase or something. So we're gonna do this triad mission first, and maybe we'll do the police mission later. You can alternate between them as you choose. And, yeah, what I was gonna say about the parking garages is... What I kind of like about this game, compared to a lot of other open-world games, is that... Once you get a vehicle, uh, it just appears, like, once you buy one. Not every vehicle you steal appe appears in your parking garage. But once you buy a vehicle, it appears in your parking garage. And those parking garages are, like, littered all over the city. So anytime you want a vehicle, you can just kind of walk to the nearest parking garage and get one. But we start with just our motorcycle here. I have to admit, I don't necessarily consider the driving and sleeping dogs to be that impressive. Uh, it seems like the vehicles are really hard to handle, at least for me. But, you know, maybe that's done for, from a realism perspective, like it's meant to make the game a little bit more realistic, but I think the driving in this is a little bit less fun than it is in some other open world games that I've mentioned before. That being said, it's... Ooh, that wasn't very good. Uh, that being said, it's totally satisfactory and is, you know, a, it's easy to get from point A to point B. It's not like you're driving a, like a buttered bus or something. I don't know what a buttered bus is, it just seemed to come out right. So we've reached our waypoint here for this triad mission. And I'm probably going to skip over most of the dialogue here because I don't want to, you know, actually spoil anything. But suffice to say, uh, we're going to get in this van and basically we're trying to prove to Winston that we all oh got to just kill an innocent. This is a good time to point this out, actually. You see those three shields that came up? It was like minus 15 innocent killed. Anytime you're in a mission, uh, you have two scores that you try to build up or not lose. And you can see I'm losing even more there. Um, so the blue one is my cop score. So as those shields deplete, my cop score gets lower and lower. So you increase your cop score by doing lawful things, like, I guess, not running into people, not destroying property, like I am absolutely failing to do right now. Uh, and you lose cop points by, you know, destroying property, killing innocents, killing police officers is a really bad one that affects your cop score. Uh, the other ones are red shields, which you'll see when we get into combat here. These are our triad score. And you get triad score for, you know, doing badass stuff, beating the shit out of people, basically. Um, but, uh, those, you can basically just think of those as experience points, and I'll explain that a little bit more later. So we're just gonna get into some combat here. You know, this does, I'm not gonna say suffer, but it has the same kind of formula as a lot of games like this, where pretty much every mission is like drive from point A to point B, beat up a bunch of motherfuckers when you get there, and then, you know, maybe engage in a car chase to get away or something like that. We'll talk about the police in a little bit, because the police are, uh, you know, an omnipotent, well not omnipotent, but they're everywhere in this game. Maybe omnipresent is a better way to describe that. 
Uh, yeah, and they will hunt your ass down. And they, like, if you so much as like do a very minor driving violation, I've like tried to pass on the right, well, within the same lane, which is definitely frowned upon, uh, and just had police like come up to me. Man, I'm almost in danger here. I should point out, like I said, um, yeah, we'll talk about the police later, but the... I wouldn't necessarily call Sleeping Dogs a difficult game. Oh yeah, let's grab this dude and throw him in the dumpster. Throw the... Uh, I can throw him in the electrical box as well, we'll see if that works. Those environmental kills, you can see my triad points getting built up uh, as I go through those. Um, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily call Sleeping Dogs a difficult game, but I have died a couple of times, you know, in my five hours of play. I wouldn't necessarily call it an easy game either, there's been a lot of times when I've come close. So you can see I'm actually glowing right now. If you look at the meter very quickly next to my health on the bottom, this is our face meter. So as we kill people and attack people, uh, our face meter builds up, and once it gets to full, we start to glow. And this allows us to get regenerating health, which is pretty important in some of these bigger fights, and also allows us to intimidate enemies. You can see that one dude was cowering when I came up to him. So now I think this is the first time the game introduces melee weapons. This is an element of the game that I think is not particularly strong compared to, or not particularly nuanced maybe is a good way to put it, uh, compared to the actual like fluidity of the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Works a lot like, you know, getting a baseball bat in Grand Theft Auto or something, where basically if we get this crowbar, we can just use it to go to town on some assholes, and it, it's not like we have any special crowbar moves, we're just bashing dudes in the face with it, so we'll maybe try to pick it up here in a second. If I can get, oh there we go, yeah, and now we can just like hit the, hit the X button and mash fools brains in. And I think, yeah, we have one more set of enemies to deal with here. These guys have knives, but as you can see, looks like crowbar beats knife, and it's much faster to kill them with melee weapons. But the game does a very good job of not really presenting you with that many melee weapons, at least in the early game. And it doesn't present you with that many guns, either. So most of the time you're doing combat, you're doing it hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, and I think that's a very strong part of the game. So I think that was a very good decision uh, by the developers. So the gunplay, I mean, I've had gunplay before. It feels very Max Payne-y. I should point out, in like the... Uh, four or five hours I played in this game, probably only had a gun in my hand two or three times. Uh, yeah, the gun play feels very Max Payne-y, but I don't know, I played Max Payne 3 on the PC, so the aiming with the Xbox 360 controller seems a little bit foreign to me. I would much prefer a mouse and keyboard, but that's not the game's fault necessarily. Um, so we're in a car chase here. I should point out the reason it's Max Payne-y is because you can actually enter in a slowdown. There's some perks that increase your slowdown as well. Oh man, we're gonna be able to kill this dude easily. So the way we drive is actually a little bit different than most open world games. Uh, what we do is we just hit X to ram, so instead of trying to like pit maneuver the enemy, spin them out, and then like bash him into a wall or something, we're just driving, we want to get behind them or next to them, and then just hit X plus the direction that we want to ram, and we do that weird little ramming motion. It's a little bit unusual, but you know, I think it works for the game. It makes it so the car chases are, by and large, like very, very fast, as opposed to, you know, a lot, that was a pet peeve of a lot of open world games. Even, let's go back to a Poison Mushroom episode, Autobahn Police C, where you had to like have a health bar on the car, spin out the car and then destroy its health bar, like that's a pain in the ass. And this way, you only have to ram a car two or three times to disable it. Probably not very realistic, but I don't know, maybe it's realistic. I've never rammed a car before. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a little unusual. Try not to run over that innocent, please. I would love to save some cop points. Uh, and that was me moving the camera, by the way, not the game, so... Don't hate on the game for that. So yeah, we gotta drive to our safe house, basically, or wherever we're dropping off these stolen goods, but... Oh no, it's the cops! So the way I deal with being chased by the cops is basically to just slow down until they get next to me and then just ram the shit out of them. The problem is if I drive as fast as I possibly can, I can't get outside of like the circle of it. Oh, well, I guess he just crashed into a wall or something. Uh, but if I drive as fast as I can, I can't get outside of that like circle of influence that the police have. But I can't, uh, the cop also can't seem to catch up with me. But if I drive more slowly, cop comes out next to me. I just use the ram button a couple of times, get him off the road. Bob's your uncle and we are going to top glamour imports. So I think this is a pretty good example of a, a standard triad mission. Uh, you know, been a lot of like raiding factories from rival lieutenants in the Chinese triads. There's been a lot of, I don't know, intimidation and extortion and stuff like that. But this mission does a good job of kind of demonstrating all of the different things that you can do in Sleeping Dogs. You know, a little bit of hand-to-hand, -hand, a little bit of melee combat, and a little bit of a car chase, including the police at the very end here. So we're probably going to skip over this cutscene a little bit. Basically, we just stole all of these fake watches is not really a big deal. And then after this, we can show off some of the other stuff that you can do in the game. Some of the side missions, you can say. And maybe we'll show off a police mission as well. Like, God knows we have the time right now. Thanks for the watch, Jackie. That's a, a nice gesture. So, after this, I will probably just steal this motorcycle. Oh, I should point out. Yeah, we're going to get probably, definitely, a new level of the triadness here. 
And whenever you get a new level, you get a new upgrade point. So we can spend our triad upgrades. You can see on the top there, there's multiple paths. Uh, we can spend this on a lot of things like melee weapon boost or you know, like new different kinds of strikes and stuff like that. Uh, but right now in the early game, all we have access to really is do we want increased resistance or do we want increased damage? And I am going to go for increased damage because I don't seem to take too, too much damage. So I don't mind uh, that. So we got a cop upgrades as well. I should point out the Slim Jim is a great upgrade that in my like long game, I definitely got this upgrade right off the bat. So this allows us to steal cars more stealthily and quietly. When you do it normally, you just like break the window and the alarm goes off and everyone notices what the heck you're doing. But if you have the Slim Jim, you could basically like steal a car in front of a cop and a lot of the time he won't understand what's going on. So that's definitely a, a good upgrade. And this one actually allows us to like exit a car while shooting in slow motion. So some standard like hard boiled style like Hong Kong action movie. So we're just going to hop on this motorcycle right here. If you can see that yellow icon on our map right now, basically that is a, a favor that we can do for a member of the community that will give face. But, oh yeah, why not? Do some sweet turnarounds there. So face is like kind of our third form of experience currency. We've got the triad points, we got the cop points, and then we have face as well. So face is gained by doing favors for members of the community here. So we'll just see what this young man has to say. Hey, you're Song Yi, right? I was racing earlier. And I would have won. But this guy, Tommy Han Lan, he cheated. Ran me off the road at the last minute. Can you teach him a lesson? Keep him from doing it again? Yeah, sure. He's not far. Wreck his car. That'll teach him. You guys ever play Spider-Man 2 on like the last generation of consoles? Like Xbox, PS2, GameCube? This is from, and it was a PC version as well, but apparently it was garbage. But anyway, that is neither here nor there. Um, the side missions remind me a lot of that. These are usually, like, much smaller, you know, like, two or three minute missions that you do. Uh, I've done a lot of this, like, beat someone up, intimidate someone, break someone's property. Uh, and also there was one mission that I did that was pretty cool. I haven't done a lot of these face missions, I'll, I'll admit here. Uh, but, uh, one of the missions I did was, like, this lady was like, We can't afford to keep our food stand! Drive my car into the river so we can claim the insurance money! So th there's a little bit of variety there. But by and large, it is like Spider-Man 2 style. My balloon! Spider-Man, help me get my balloon! Like, stuff like that. But, uh, we're just gonna beat the shit out of this dude's car. I love these two guys right here. I did this mission before, actually, in my regular save file. They're like, what? What? I feel like I'm playing Street Fighter 2 right now. Just go to town on this car. And eventually, the driver will hopefully realize what the hell is going on and will come over here. Oh, there he is. Okay, finally. So we can either choose, we could, like, fight him with a tire iron, but I would rather do, uh, face-to-face -face here. Or hand-to-hand, -hand, I should say. Uh, I should point out, if you saw that, like, oh, if you saw the, uh, icon under him, I don't know if there's anything to push him into here, this might kill him, but the icon under him was basically, like, two fists crossed. Yeah, you can see it right there. He's gonna die right now. Pretty sure. Um, but, this basically means that he's a different enemy type. There's, like, basic enemy types, and then there's more, oh, he's not dead yet? And then there's, uh, like, special enemy types, like this guy. This guy's a brawler, which basically means that his... Strikes can't be interrupted. Normally, if, a, if an average player or an average enemy that you come across strikes at you, you can just, uh, you know, strike at him and it'll interrupt his strike. But you can't do that against the brawler. Instead, you have to counter it. Which is fine. I, I use counters predominantly anyway. Wait, what are these guys doing? That's my bike! Oh, one thing that's really cool about this, this will be good to show off, is sometimes, like, regular people will get into fights with you. They have incredibly low health and they're extremely uncoordinated, as you can see right there. So we can pretty much just knock this dude straight out by kicking him in the face. Yeah, maybe not the most police-like way to do things, but yeah, you got the job done. So yeah, sometimes you can like anger people on the streets and they won't have any martial arts experience and they are very, very easy to take down. I can't believe that that police officer did not come after me. But anyway, yeah, we've set a waypoint for our next police mission here. So we'll just show this off. This might actually be our first police mission. And this is undercover police headquarters right here. So as I said, uh, basically, our police missions usually boil down, at least in my time so far, there's been a major subplot involving like a drug provider or a drug trafficker for the Chinese triad, but it tends to be more like, you know, by the, well, not, not necessarily by the book stuff, but, um, you know, more policey stuff as opposed to, hey, rob that dude. So we're going to text a guy that we were uh, involved with earlier in the story, and I should talk about the story, because the story of Sleeping Dogs, I think they pride themselves uh, very much on it, the developers, I should say, or the writers pride themselves on it. And it, is, it does have a certain cinematic quality, but to a certain extent, to me anyway, it just feels like it's... Oh, I'll do some more parkouring there. Felt like I wanted to open my parachute. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe we'll go over to this food stand and buy something from this dude, and then I'll talk about the story. Yeah, buy some curry fish balls. Briefly allows full health regeneration. That's probably not going to come in handy. 
But Lord knows I do love a good curried fish ball. No laughing! No laughing allowed. And then just pick up this bowl. Drink those curry fish balls. And then just drop this bowl right on the fucking street. I don't give a shit. This isn't my city. <laughs> Alright. Um, yeah, we can probably go to the parking garage here and get our motorcycle back as well. Like I said, I really like this parking garage mechanic. But yeah, the story to me so far hasn't necessarily... And I know I'm drawing this comparison a lot. And a lot of people do not like Grand Theft Auto 4. But I think Grand Theft Auto 4 is fantastic. I don't think the story in this is as well written or as well presented as in something like Grand Theft Auto 4. That being said, again, it's totally competent. In fact, it's probably beyond competent. There's some cool stuff going on, like uh, Waze shifting allegiances, because he has this vendetta against the Triad for some stuff that they've done to his family. But also, as he gets into the Triad, he makes these personal connections with these gangsters. So even though they're assholes and criminals, you know, he has this personal connection to them. But of course, his job requires him to turn them in. So there's a nice little set of like conflicting emotions and stuff like that. He doesn't get along well with his superiors, but then again, in what s cop story does a cop get along well with his superiors, right? Give me your badge and your gun, Way. You killed 35 innocents today. Okay, we're gonna almost be at the noodle shop here. I think I've missed out. But yeah, and also, um, the guys at United Front Games, or I don't know who signed the checks, if it was the guys at United Front Games or at Square Enix, but they shelled out for some you know, high quality voice talent. It's got Emma Stone in it, who you are probably familiar with from Zombieland and Easy A and stuff like that. Uh, as well as Tom Wilkinson, who was in like, In the Bedroom, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Like, you got some high quality voice talent here. So far, those guys have played minor characters. I've only run across them. I've only run across Emma Stone's character once or twice, but uh, she basically works as kind of like, there's kind of, a, as you get later in the game, it seems like there's a little bit of a dating mechanic, like there's all these girls you can take out, you can go sing karaoke with a hostess at the VIP bar, or you get, there's this American tourist played by Emma Stone who you can go out with, uh, but I haven't really dabbled too much with that, I've mostly been going mission to mission. So basically I talked entirely over Ming's dialogue there, but what we are doing is just meeting this drug supplier called Popstar, so we will just possibly run... All the way to Popstar's courtside hangout, where he's going to be just chilling on a sofa. And once we get there, we, he's probably... I mean, this is what kind of confused... Like, it's a... If this was in a movie, I'm pretty sure we would just go to this dude with a fat stack of bills and be like, Give me drugs, I clearly have money. But because this is a video game, uh, instead, I go up to him and he's like, Well, you need to make... I need to make sure you're loyal. So you got to get your money by beating up these deadbeats who owe me some money. I'm like, okay, well, I get it. It's a video game. We got to do something beyond just running around. But, you know, things like that kind of take away from the story for me. But the, the cinematics sh certainly you know, bring it home. So we're going to talk to Popstar here. You Popstar? Who's asking? Look, I work for Winston. Dirty Ming's operating in our territory. I want to make sure he's supplied. Sure. I'll fix him up. But... But what? I got to get paid in advance. I'll make it easy for you. A couple of deadbeat junkies owe me money. Guys used to deal for me before they became their own best customer. Collect what they owe me, and I'll hook your man up. Alright, so this will probably be the last mission that we do here. I think we've showed off a good variety of the sort of stuff that you can do in Sleeping Dogs. Do some parkouring here. Maybe we can jump over those boxes. Maybe ah, jump over the railing. That'll do. Uh, yeah, and this is going to be pretty goddamn easy. I mean, this would scare me if I was one of these dudes and I just came up. So, I think it kind of reflects poorly on Sleeping Dogs that we've seen two phone booth kills. I promise you that there are other kind of like environmental elements that we can throw dudes into and absolutely just fucking kill them. So we're going to extort money from this man. Alright, I don't speak Cantonese, so I have no idea what he just said. Usually there's subtitles, but yeah, as I was saying, there's other environmental stuff that you can throw dudes into. Like, I was doing one mission that took place at, like, a sweatshop or something, or, like, a refinery, and there was just a blast furnace, and I just grappled a dude. Can't jump over that. Uh, yeah, I just grappled a dude and threw his face directly into the blast furnace, which is probably not good for your cop points. Alright, you want a piece of this man? Get out of here. Thinks he's a hotshot just because he's got a big belt. And I love this because Popstar just produces this box out of nowhere. Got your money. Yeah, nice. Tell Ming to stick with girls over 14 this time. Alright, so now the police are going to come for us. Again, like I said, a lot of these missions seem kind of like arbitrarily multi-tiered. Like, we have to deal with a lot of this nonsense. So they could have arrested us right there, but we had a quick time event to get out. And we actually handcuffed the dude. And now we can run away. So we could do some free running here, but it's probably in our best interest to instead just steal a car or something. But I might be able to get away, because the police, obviously, are probably not as well coordinated as Wei is right now. I'm so close to the edge of the circle that they can see me in here. 
You can see police on the map if you haven't noticed that yet. Like, police show up as, like, blue and red dots. And uh, if they're in a car, they show up as, like, blue and red stars. So we're almost, almost home free here. But not quite. I might be able to make it, actually. I've never actually gotten away from the police on foot. But there's a first time for everything. Hopefully. By the way, those vending... Yeah, we're gonna get away. That was easy. By the way, those vending machines are fully functional. I think most of them, anyway. So we can buy, like, some energy drinks in them and it'll give us, it'll give us like, extra strike damage or something. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna call our superior. And then we're going to bring the drugs that we got back to Ming over here. I could run, but why run when we could drive? This is what I mean when it is so loud to steal a car and it attracts attention from, like, everyone around you. But we will just bring these drugs back to Ming. Watch out, try not to kill any innocents. Still so hard for me to get used to driving on the left side. And that was a quick drive. Some vaulting over here. And we want to go in this area right here. And that will represent the end of this police mission. I believe, anyway. So let's let Ming do his talking here if we can find them. Whoa, buddy, where are you going? Oh, I lead Omar. Got the stuff, right? Don't worry, I got your stuff right here. Now I can start making money again. Cool, so this is going to represent the end of this mission here. This has been Sleeping Dogs, I have to say. Maybe this is not cool to say, but I kind of expected, just from the marketing of this game, I kind of expected the game to be garbage. But I was pleasantly surprised to find that it is not garbage. And I think that this game is actually really solid. I could easily see myself spending a lot of time in their world of Hong Kong. Definitely going to get that Slim Jim. Uh, yeah, sp spending a lot of time in this, like, Sleeping Dogs world uh, of Hong Kong. And I think, in particular, if you're a fan of open world games, this is definitely something that you're going to enjoy, obviously. Uh, but apart from that, it's also been such, like, a... We're just going to steal a car here to actually show you... How, how well the Slim Jim works. Uh, maybe I can't actually take this one. Sometimes there's cars that you just can't steal for whatever reason. And this appears to be one of them. So I guess we'll find another one. But yeah, in a summer that has been... You know, at least from my standpoint, pretty much bereft of... Or at least light on uh, really good AAA titles. I think Sleeping Dogs is something that could definitely uh, attract a lot of attention. So we'll Slim Jim here, as you can see. That went very well. I'm just, just opening my car over here. I didn't use any kind of illegal tools. But in any case, that is Sleeping Dogs. Showed off the single player. I have to confess there is no multiplayer element, which might be a deal breaker for a lot of people. But definitely, uh, yeah, I think this game is going to be worth the money for a lot of people. Seems like it's got a long, decent story, and there's lots of stuff that you can do around here. So I'm going to end this video by uh, going up to get a massage. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.